How would you like to be able to take your map from something like this to something like this? Well, I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do to make that happen. Stick around. Get in, loser. We're going to the internet. Good evening, everybody. I am DadBod. Tonight, we are continuing on with our tutorial series for map making in Celeste using the program Ahorn. Uh, for everyone who commented on the last video, I do appreciate all the good feedback. And yes, there will be an Ahorn installation video. I've decided that I'm going to do it. Uh, you're just going to have to give me a little bit more time. I am getting another computer set up so I can do a clean install so I don't have any issues. And uh, yeah, we're going to go from there. So if you remember from the very last episode, we had uh, we just made a map, showed off a little bit how to do some gameplay, and it just kind of looked pretty bland though. Like, you know, we, we just had like an area that we could play in and it was cool or whatever, but like there was no background, there was no design, there was no decoration, and style grounds is the, the way to really start the decoration process and make your map look like it's part of a real game. One of the big mistakes that I made early on is I just had something like, um, so for example, oops, sorry Maddie. I just took background tiles and put this here. I feel like I'm playing Terraria so that, oops, when you load it, like you have that as your background. But there is so much more that you can do. And this was a big mistake of mine when I first started uh, making maps. So we're gonna go over style grounds uh, in pretty good detail. Um, big shout out to Moon, who is like the style ground king. Uh, he actually gave me a, a crash course just before this. Uh, to show this off to you guys, because I was actually really no good with style grounds, and with just like the hours worth of his help, I got pretty comfortable with it, and we're going to show off how this stuff works, what it means, what it does, what to focus on, and what to probably just for the time being avoid. So we are going to get into that, guys. Once again, if you are not a member of the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. I'd love to hear about it. Any other things that you want to see in these type of tutorial videos, um, I'm happy to put that stuff together. And uh, finally, if you guys haven't seen yet, memberships for the channel are live. Uh, it's a great way to support the channel if you want to go further than just liking, commenting. Uh, memberships start at just a buck, and there are a lot of cool perks going uh, for that at different levels, uh, including things that we do special in the Discord channel and just giving the chat more things like emojis and uh, obviously you get shoutouts and all that cool stuff. So if you're looking for a way to further support the channel, I would really appreciate that I would love you forever like forever but let's get to this video all right so we got to get rid of this because this just looks bad let's get rid of that but so the first thing we're gonna do is we want to find a tile set that 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 works and I, I know you guys probably have something that you've already done and it looks cool let's mess with I'll pick summit for right now I'll take summit over actually have two rooms just to show off a, a couple different a couple different things so let's do that and we can just kind of get so I have some kind of feel there we go looks cool enough I like it all right so style grounds very 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 important so we are first going to go into map and we are going to open up <clears throat> style grounds. Now we see a ton of stuff here and it looks very intimidating. I know because like two hours ago I was looking at this and just going, oh Moon, can't you just decorate every map I've ever done forever? And the answer is probably going to be yes, but just in case Moon dies, I want to be able to do this. So that's what we're going to do. Let's go over this from the very beginning. So as you can see from the top, we have two tabs, Parallax and Effect. We're going to stay on Parallax right now, starting in Texture, so we can see when we click open Texture, there is a ton of different things in here. And based on the folder that it's in, these are all in your graphics uh, folders for Celeste, by the way, uh, you can see different 
pieces, whether it's, um, you know, we can see different clouds, we can see different backgrounds here. Obviously, BG is going to stand for backgrounds, so that looks kind of pretty. I see some mountains, maybe some clouds. So let's first pick a background. So that background looks pretty cool. It's kind of like a cloudy background. Depending on what you have, you can kind of go through and, and pick something that works best for you. So I'm going to stick with um, BG's 07, BG0, and we are going to add this in. Now, we're going to go over just a couple of the... Uh, options here and I'm going to tell you what they do and why you would want to use them and you're going to see more of them in action as we go. There's a couple that we're probably not going to worry about too much but uh, we'll get there when we get there I guess. So cool. All right so with textures we know that that is going to be just what is happening in the background or the foreground. Uh, so it's very important as you can see it will show up let's um, for sake of discussion let's grab let's grab this one also now whatever is on the top is going to be furthest in the back as long as it's set to background and we'll get to that in just a second because you can see right now foreground is checked on both of these the problem with that if you have foreground checked is when we reset our map it just looks like this I can play but these are set to the foreground. It's not going to look that sweet. So let's go back to style grounds and we are going to click. We see foreground down here. We're going to uncheck that update foreground, uncheck update. Where did my mountain go? <clears throat> All right, well, let's just take this mountain instead. So we're going to pick that mountain, update, save, and now we've got a background, which is cool, awesome. So now that's starting to look a little bit more like a Celeste map. I'm sure you would agree with that instead of the weird, just plain old black background. <clears throat> so from here, we got a couple more options that we can mess around with. So only only is used when you want to set very specific rooms to have this style ground show up. Uh, anytime you see an asterisk, it will it implies that all of the rooms use that. So that's why it's important that we have rooms numbered as we said before. So A01 or A-01, A-02. We could have um, you know, if you have different checkpoints, you may have checkpoint, you know, from the beginning to checkpoint one could be A-01, and then at checkpoint two, it's B-01. Uh, what's really neat about this is you can make a set of style grounds, and we could have um, A- dash and then leave an asterisk, and what's going to happen is it's only going to show these style grounds on anything that is A dash, and any numbers after that, it's going to show those style grounds. Once it switches to B, we can actually have a second set of style grounds that will work in there. For the time being, we're just going to leave the asterisks in there, so all rooms are going to get that. All right, exclude. It's pretty self-explanatory. You can put whatever room you want in there. Now, keep in mind, all of these are separated by commas, and once you put that room in there, so if we want to exclude, for example, um, A02, we can update, exclude A02, oops, we'll go A-02, update, update. So I'll save here and reload so that when I go in here, it's gone. So obviously for certain transitions, that's kind of important. All right, tag is um, a field I'm not really gonna talk about here. It's so far from what I've seen, uh, I haven't seen a ton of uses for it and we might save it for a more advanced portion of a video. So we're just gonna skip that guy right now. Flag is another one we're probably not gonna spend a ton of time with. There is a... Um, under placements and triggers, there's actually a, a flag that you can set certain areas that if you go into, it will um, trigger that style ground for that period of time, which 
can be useful. Um, I guess. I don't know. I'm sure depending on uh, how creative you want to be, you can do a lot of stuff. So you would just create that trigger, name that trigger, and then place the trigger name under flag. Not flag is just the opposite of that. Just kind of weird, but it's there. All right, for blend mode, uh, default is alpha blend. You have alpha and additive. Depending on the texture that we have, uh, you may need to switch to additive. Most of the time we just stick with alpha blend. Uh, determines whether the colors from overlapping style grounds should be added on top of each other or multiplied. Still working that out. All right, color. Color is very fun. So as you can see, the default value is FF, F, 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 big F. Um, if a style ground has a default color, if you keep the default as F, it will just stay that color. However, we could go and find a hex color picker and maybe find something, just a crazy color if we want. And we could pop it in here. And now, now we've got a crazy green background. That actually looks really bad. Now that I'm looking at that, it's really bad. So we can always change it back or we can pick something totally different. Uh, let's see, let's mess around with it. How about uh, maybe something like that? I don't know. <clears throat> that looks pretty. Looks kind of pretty. So we can keep it like that for right now. For science. All right, back to business and explaining what all this stuff does. So color, pretty self-explanatory there. The X and the Y value just show where it's going to start. So for example, uh, the best example of showing this is if I put the Y value to like negative 10. Uh, let's put it to negative 40 just to be real extra. Now we can see that the mountains are not in place. Now this could be okay if we add an extra layer. So maybe we find, <clears throat> let's try to find a texture that might have some, some trees or something. Maybe something like those. Those look pretty cool. You could have like a destroyed city. That actually wouldn't be too bad either. Let's check that out actually really quick. Let's take off foreground, add that in there, and that looks good. So the city is gonna be up front. We're gonna have the mountains in the back and then the skyline there. So let me update that and take a look at that. So we can still kind of see the mountains back there, which kind of looks bad. You wanna maybe have something else back there if you kind of wanna do it that way. Let's see if we can get one more thing back there or what we can always do is just go in and take these mountains down a bit to maybe, how about 20, negative 20, which would bring them up only 20 rather than 40. <clears throat> and that looks cool. So actually that, that doesn't look too bad at all. Now, the one thing that kind of looks off is just the background is really flat. And the next piece that we're going to get into here coming up is going to show how, how we can impact that and make it look more natural. So getting back into our style grounds. Um, so we kind of have a good idea with the X and Y values. It's, it's pretty self-explanatory here. The next part we're going to talk about is the scroll. And scroll is really, really, really important for making your map just like really dynamic. And the scroll X is going to be how fast something scrolls in the background. So for example, let's say we want to make these mountains look like they're really far away. I would set the scroll X to a number less than one, we'll call it 0.25. And since we don't want it to scroll up and down, I'll set the scroll Y value to zero and I'll explain or I'll show I guess why and why that's important. Um, in just a second. 
because there's a couple other things that we want to look into before we um, dig into that. The other um, piece is the, down here, the loop X and the loop Y. So this is a style ground that looks like it would just stretch out from left to right. If you loop the Y, if you go high enough, like you have a, a vertical screen, you're going to see just another line or bar of those mountains and it's gonna look really bad. So we wanna turn loop Y off so that it just puts one layer of that and that's all. Loop X, we want to keep consistent. So let's see what the scroll value uh, X.25 uh, for the background does. So now we can see the mountains in the background, you can see that they appear now to be way further away, you know, as compared to how it was before, where it was just all kind of one flat thing. Now, this makes it look like these buildings, though, are like Madeline is right next to these buildings. So if we wanted to do something that made them seem a little bit further away, but not nearly as far away as the mountains, we can maybe change that scroll to, uh, let's say 0.75. Let's try that and see how it looks. I can take off the loop Y update. And now we get a lot more different of an effect. So we can see that the mountains appear way farther away than the city, but now the city actually appears as though it's, it's, it's a bit in the distance now. Now the skyline still looks kind of whatever. Let's see if we can make that look much better. So we are going to dig in here and we're gonna talk about the next piece, uh, and that is going to be speed X and speed Y. So what this number does is this moves, yeah, you can see it right there, automatically moves the style ground along the X axis in game. If it's a uh, horizontal level, sometimes you'll want something like that. So let's set the value to one and see what it looks like when we have that. Now we can see that the skyline is moving just a little bit. That's that's like okay, but that's not really fast. And you can kind of change that up as you wish. So let's set it to something like, how about seven? Seven is a great number. And now we've got it moving independently as we're standing still, it's still moving. We have the mountains in the background appear to be way further away than our building. And we've got, you know, something that is starting to look a lot more dynamic, a lot more like a real, uh, real map. So let's continue on. The last few things in here, so obviously speed X, speed Y, that determines, you know, how that moves. Alternatively, I can just keep the speed at zero and I might set the the scroll value of these to be a little bit different. Uh, you know, it's up to you. This is where you can kind of go in and play around and see what you like, see what you don't like, and uh, kind of take it from there. So let's see what a 0.5 looks like. So now the background doesn't move, but you can definitely tell that the sky has a little bit more body to it. So we've got, I mean, it is starting to come around pretty nicely. Let's continue on. We got a few more pieces to get into. So the alpha, alpha blend is essentially how, um, how transparent or solid it is. A one is the default value, which is totally solid. Uh, with this, there are some cool effects that you can do. So let's set the alpha blend to 0.5 on the, the city and save and now we can see that it's almost ghostly and that could have some good value for certain things probably not for this because you can just like see right through it and you see the mountains which is kind of weird it's like really weird 
So let's go ahead and switch that back because that doesn't look that sweet. So we're going to switch that alpha back to one. Update. All right, a couple quick things too to note. So fade in is, I mean, it, essentially, if you have a room that doesn't have the style ground and you are transitioning to a room that does have the style ground and you want fade in, it takes it from essentially whatever style ground is there and fades it into the new one. For some reason, there's not a fade out. I never got that uh, because it's just a hard fade out if you have to fade out of it. So I would fade into a different transition if you're going to go uh, to that. Because normally, I guess you would just always fade into something else. So just make sure you keep that in mind if you are doing it. Flip X and flip Y. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory. If we flip the Y value, our city becomes upside down, which is, I guess, could have some value, but not for what we're doing here. Uh, obviously, if we have foreground, foreground could have some, you'll see some textures in here. Yeah, let's just go with that one for time's sake. So we want to, that's going to be foreground. We add that. Notice that foreground automatically goes to the top. It doesn't necessarily even matter, but what foreground is going to look like is something like this here. Now, obviously, we have to adjust the you can adjust the foreground, but the way that foreground is moving right now, it's at a, uh, let me just switch this back actually, cause that's, that's really goofy. So we can go to foreground and we can see that the scroll is 0.75, which gives the appearance of it looking much closer. And obviously we, when we slow down the, the foreground, it just kind of gives some extra effects. So depending on what you're using, obviously we wouldn't use it for a map like this. So I'm gonna get rid of that because it just looks silly. And let's see if we can add something else to this to kind of spruce it up a bit. It's looking cool, but I think that we can do a little bit more. Let's see if we can find maybe some, some clouds. Always a good touch. So this is a happy little cloud. Let's go ahead and add this in. And oh, we still have this excluding. <laughs> we are going to make sure that this carries over. We don't want to exclude our second room. <clears throat> so our cloud is going to be, we kind of want that in the background up against the sky. So let's just like take a look at how that looks right now from this point. So we'll save, swing over, refresh. I can't see the cloud. Where is this cloud? I see no cloud. So let's figure out why the cloud is not showing up. So right now it looks like our cloud is, it might be really, really low. Let's set our Y value up to like negative 50 because it's pretty low on this graphic. So let's update, save, and see where this cloud is. Okay, I see the cloud. It's back there. You can barely see it. Let's move it up even more because it's not doing us any favors over there. So that cloud is at negative 50. We should probably put it to like negative 200 update that and save oh, now maybe it's too high hmm where's our cloud all right 200 was too high i guess so let's go back and we're gonna put this at 125 update save Get that back. There's our cloud. Boom. Now that cloud's not doing anything. Probably needs to like get a job. So let's let's put it at a speed of 10 going on the x axis. Looping x obviously will 
allow it to um, you know continue on. And you can add as many of these as you want and put them in different places. There's a lot of different types of clouds that we can um, that we can have. Turning off our scroll. Let's let's just like take a look at that. Save and load. Boom. There's our cloud. And you can see, obviously, it's going behind the building. That's very important. You set, like, where that's going. Cool. That is starting to look very nice. <clears throat> and then once that cloud goes away, you can see more coming in. So it's really just a matter of, like, kind of messing with that and seeing what you like, seeing what you don't like. Um, you could have that cloud just chilling in the sky. If we kept it at zero, maybe we'll put the uh, the scroll uh, at 0.75. Let's take a look at that. And now we have our cloud. Now maybe you don't want that cloud to like continue on. We can just turn our loop X off. Update. Oops, we actually probably go to our cloud loop X off update 0.25 and I kind of want the X value to be a little bit more to the right so we're gonna go 125 to the right so that it spawns in much later something like that awesome very cool this is starting to look pretty neat all right let's keep going so the last things that we really have to cover in here is the instant in, the instant out. And essentially what that is, is as you transition, you can have it instantly uh, just cut out or instantly come in. That's just something that you'll want to mess with if you are changing style grounds up between, um, between maps. And then obviously loop X, loop Y we already talked about. The arrows down here allow us to change the priority like based on how far back you want it to go. Keep in mind, when you work on one of these style grounds, you need to hit update before you go and edit something else, or you're gonna have a bad time. You're gonna have a very bad time. So let's continue on into the effects. Now there are a ton of different effects that we can mess around with, and we'll take a look at a few. Some of my favorites, let's... Um, we can look at snow, for example. Snow BG, which is going to be background. We have rooms. Asterisk means all rooms. We're not going to worry about any exclusions, tags, flags. And it's not in the foreground. So we just want this in the background for the time being. Update that. Save. And load. And now we've got snow in the background, which is really cool. Now that's in the background. We can also make this, if you want to make it seem like it's really coming down, we can go to effects, we can go to snow FG, we can add because now it's, we want to make sure it's clicked in the foreground and update so that when we reload the game, we have even more. So it kind of gives you that effect of, you know, is it snowing a little? Is it snowing a lot? Like what's going on here? And this can be used for a lot of different things, which is nice. And there are ways of changing up the way this looks. Going back into the style grounds, we can maybe change this up to, let's just say it's raining. And raining in the foreground, we can change raining in the background, update that. And now, it's really coming down out there. And it really feels like you're in the middle of a storm. But what's really nice too about this, as you probably saw, in the effects, we can actually change the color of that to whatever we want. So if we have the, oops, one of these is supposed to be foreground, one is supposed to be background. So let's go back and see. There we go. Now one's happening in the background, one's happening in the foreground. But we could change the color of one of them versus the other to show 
whatever we wanted to, which is kind of neat. I'll let you mess around with that. A couple other effects that we have. Um, if you decide to choose uh, black hole, make sure it's not in foreground. Black hole cancels out pretty much uh, everything that you've done in the way of uh, style grounds. And what that means is something like that. Doesn't matter what style grounds you have. <laughs> From what I've seen, it just cancels everything out. So depending on if you wanna make a farewell map, you can use that. So another one that I really like here, wind snow. This is, let's see what kind of crazy colors we can have on this. <laughs> so you can change the colors to pretty much anything. So we won't mess with too many more of these. I mean, you can kind of go in and, and do what you uh, do what you will for the time being. Let's add a snow background and I'm gonna add a snow foreground, add, and something like that I think is gonna look really good for our map here. So let's save that, update, make sure you update. I kinda, I'm digging the, the style grounds that we have so far. Let's, um, let's build up a little bit and, and just like, just see how we feel about this. Give me a green booster here. <clears throat> We're just gonna go fast mode. Oh, really quick though. One really fun thing to do if you're making a map and something that I've I've used almost exclusively. If you download uh, the Frost Helper by Jaw the Player, there is a great entity called Ice Spinner. And what's really awesome about Ice Spinner is it works just like regular spinners, but what we can do is we can actually highlight said spinners, and let's just find a sweet color. So we'll double click. If you right click these, we have a tint. So let's go to our color picker really quick, and what would be a sweet color for this map? I don't know, let's just pick something weird. Maybe not that weird. We go like really green, just for example. It's gonna look bad, but to give you a real good idea of what this is. Now we have green spinners, save, F5. And now those spinners can be literally any color that you want which is really, really, really cool. It, it definitely adds a lot of personality to whatever map you know, you're making. It's, it's awesome. So let's uh, mess around with this a little bit more. I kind of want to get, get kind of a tiny map made just to see what it looks like. And uh, then we're gonna move on to the next room and just give a couple pointers for vertical rooms. And then we're gonna end the video. All right, let's see how this plays out. Nice, very cool. So now we've taken a pretty bland looking um, background and kind of added a lot of personality to it. So let's see what happens when we need to go vertical couple things to like kind of take note of. So first things first, you can see something's wrong here. So our vertical style ground or the very, the, the sky set in the way back is not repeating itself, which if we need to climb, 
that just looks bad. And there are a couple ways of, I guess, getting around it. So let's mess around with that. All right, so we could do something with the background and just loop the Y value. And looping the Y value will essentially take us and it will just create a loop. Now, some of your style grounds are gonna look fine like that. Some of them are not gonna look fine. And you can see our, um, our mountain and our city should probably not move the way that does. So we're gonna take a look at some of the things we need to do to make this look better. All right, the other thing that we could do is we can take the background and actually just turn the scroll value to zero. And what scroll value zero is going to do is it's gonna make it not even move at all. So the rest of your background will move, which kind of gives your sky the appearance of moving, but it doesn't matter how high we go, that sky is going to stay the same. So it's just one thing to keep uh, in mind if you're doing anything vertical. Let's take a look at the other pieces of this. So going to just our city here, we can see that we're looping X, which is great. We don't want to loop Y. The scroll value of Y is zero, but let's mess around with it a little bit. Let's set the scroll value to one, which is the default, and just do that for right now. Now, by doing that, the buildings stay in place. The mountains, however, are still going with us, and we can see why that would be a problem. So let's go back in and adjust that accordingly. We'll go to our mountains, set the scroll value to the default one, update, save, so that when we load in, they still move on the uh, x-axis, but as we get higher, they stay where they should be, in my opinion. Oh, can we make that? No, we can't. When we're doing something where we have, uh, you know, backgrounds like this that we want to keep there, you just want to be kind of aware if we're going higher. Obviously, those things aren't going higher with us unless we want to make it seem like we're much closer to it. And then it's probably fine because that was that's just kind of what you would expect in a situation like that. it'll look like this and everything is gone. And this is where it is really important to go in and we wanna change the blend mode to additive. So we wanna click purple sunset, change the blend mode to additive. We could even set our alpha difference. So let's just look at it with additive, put it in there. And now it puts the map in a whole new light. So there's a lot of things that you can do with this. And obviously if we want to change that up a little bit, let's go and we're going to load back into this purple sunset and let's go to our color picker and find maybe something that's like a deep orange. I don't know. Let's just mess with that and see what it does. So we're gonna be in purple sunset, change the color, update and save, and load in. Oh, and now, now we've got something totally different. We have a really nice or All right, so now there's a couple textures though that are a little bit different. And I'll talk about those. They're at the very bottom of this dark swamp, mist, northern lights and purple sunset. Um, purple sunset actually is kind of neat. However, when we have purple sunset in, and we will update that and save it, you have to be careful because move, save. So you can see the difference in that is, is huge. So you'll definitely wanna go and mess with those a little bit. Just make sure you uh, adjust those values in the color blend so that you can um, 
you, know, you can kind of get that part right. So I think with that, we've covered a really, really good amount. Keep in mind, like everything here is adjustable from, you know, the colors to, um, you know, the positioning. There's a lot of trial and error. There's a lot of things that you have to, to just figure out and, and play around with. And it is really intimidating. Like, don't get me wrong, this is an intimidating thing. But once you get style grounds in your map, it is a total game changer. Like, I mean, an absolute game changer. It, it goes from just looking really bland and kind of whatever to like, just it pops out. It looks unique. And um, because you can adjust pretty much any color that you want on here, the possibilities are, are pretty vast, I would say. So we're gonna leave you with that. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope this was informative. We're gonna have um, we're gonna have some more tutorials here very soon. So if you guys haven't already, uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And uh, anytime we come out with anything like that, you'll be the first to know about it. There's like some notification bell or whatever. Like you can hit that. I guess I don't know. And I'll see you guys later. I appreciate you hanging out with me if you're still here. Uh, and that's all we got. Have a fantastic. Fantastic evening.